Hi, I'm Jody. Welcome back to Cooking or Something Like It. Uh, I know it's been a little while since we posted a video, but between being sick and traveling, uh, we had a little bit of a delay there. So I hope that uh, everybody's been well and, and that you enjoyed the last video that we did with Toganola. Uh, it was one of our more popular ones, the loose granola. So if you haven't seen that one, go back and check it out. Uh, if you'll notice in the background, we do have some uh, younger people here. So you might hear some noise in the background. We have tried to upgrade our audio. So I do have a microphone now. So hopefully the audio is a little crisper. Um, as always, Gunner is frantically pacing around. So you'll probably hear his nails on the floor too. Uh, we're going to do something that's a little bit different today, uh, different as far as what type of cuisine it is. We are actually going to make something called shakshuka, which is a Tunisian dish. And like I said, you're going to hear some noise in the background. Um, for those of you who don't know where Tunisia is, Tunisia is a country in Africa, on the very northern shore of Africa. So it has a lot of influences from... African cuisine, Middle Eastern cuisine, and even some European cuisine. Um, look at a map. If you don't know where it is, look at a map, check it out. <laughs> our, our, our little participants in the background have decided to suddenly become very vocal. So, um, But you should be able to hear me just fine. So what do I have here and how are we going to do this? Oh, before I get into that, a little bit of administrative stuff. Uh, we have a YouTube page, a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and a web page. Um, you can see those on the screen here. Uh, so check those out. The web page has the blog, the recipes, all of the videos archived. It's the best, probably the best place to find everything. Um, Instagram has more photos, and the Facebook page is just kind of our daily log of what we're doing. Um, YouTube also has all the videos stored too, but. Uh, the recipes aren't there. <laughs> if you don't think we do this real time, time no, she's been quiet the whole time right up till now. So if you don't think we do this in real time, there you go. Okay, so what do I have here? I have two onions. I have a shallot. I have two green peppers. I have six medium-sized tomatoes. I have one jalapeno. I have a tablespoon of berberine. We talked about berberry before. Berberry is an Ethiopian spice. Um, it's kind of like curry, but it's got a little bit of a different, uh, different spin on it. I have toasted paprika, about a tablespoon. I have half a tablespoon of Himalayan pink salt. You can use regular salt. I have a tablespoon of cumin. Now, this is what cumin actually looks like before it's ground up. Most of you are probably familiar with cumin in a, like this, in a powdered form. Uh, that you put in taco meat and stuff like that. But this is what cumin actually looks like. It looks like little seed pods. So we're going to grind that up ourselves to get the most flavor. I have six or seven large green olives. I have about two tablespoons of fresh chives. I have four eggs. And I have about four ounces of feta cheese. So I'm going to set some of this stuff over here to get it out of the way. And we are going to cut up all these veggies. So, and everything's cut up. All right, so what I have here is <laughs> right on cue there, Abigail. Uh, right on cue, we have onions. This is the shallot, the green pepper, the tomatoes, the jalapeno pepper, and the chives. All right, so what I'm gonna do is this is six tomatoes in here. I'm gonna add the salt the berberry, the paprika, and then I'm gonna grab my mortar and pestle and we're gonna grind up the cumin. Now you don't have to get it into a fine powder, but you just wanna crush those pods up. And if you don't have a mortar and pestle or access to fresh cumin seeds, just use the powdered stuff. Uh, pretty much I'm making the same thing, but the difference is, with this ground up cumin like this, the flavor is so much brighter. I know it's a weird word for flavor, but it just, it really pops when you grind it fresh like this. So it grinds up real easy. Put that right in there. And we're gonna mix this up. And we're gonna just let this sit for a little bit. All right. 
Try and let those flavors come together. Okay. While that's resting, we're going to get the rest of this going. All right, so I've got about two tablespoons of oil in the pan here. Um, heat it on high. Pretty much what we're trying to do is cook down our onions and peppers. Take a drink here. All right, once that gets hot, we're gonna saute the, the peppers, the onions, the shallots. Now, <clears throat> as you can tell, we have a small child here and uh, I have my 13 year old son here. Now, normally, if I was gonna make this for myself, I would throw the jalapenos in now. Um, I'm not gonna do that because it will make it pretty spicy, but if you are cooking this for adults or for people who like stuff spicy, I'd mix this in now. In fact, you could probably mix it right in with the tomatoes right now, and it would really blend together well. All right, so let this start to get hot. We'll get our onions going. We'll get the peppers going. And we're gonna cook this until they soften up a little bit. Shallots. If you don't use shallots, shallots are a lot like onions, same family, except they give you a little bit more of a pop and a little bit more of a delicate flavor. A lot of times when you're eating something in a restaurant and you don't know, you can't put your finger on, you can't put your finger on what that flavor is, and it's a vegetable like oniony flavor, I swear she doesn't say a word when we're not filming. So <laughs> it's it's shallots. A lot of times it's shallots in the recipe that you just can't seem to put your finger on. Oh, one thing I did forget. I don't know how I could forget this is garlic. Now this is pre-chopped garlic. You can buy this in any grocery store. I'm gonna use the equivalent of two cloves. If you have fresh cloves of garlic, obviously we always encourage you to use fresh, but about two teaspoons is about two cloves. So, I forgot that early on, that's my fault. I don't know how I would ever forget garlic, but, all right. So I'm gonna mix that into the tomatoes. Uh, garlic cooks a lot faster, so it doesn't need to cook along with that stuff. And you can see here, I'll put this over here so you can see it, a lot of juice is starting to come out of those tomatoes, right? That salt really sweats the juice out, and you're getting that real thick, not real thick, but you're getting like a broth in there. That's what we're looking for. We want those tomatoes to really steep in that. All right. Okay. I'm gonna cover this just to let that get going. It'll get a little hotter with the cover on. And normally you wouldn't serve this over bread, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently just to kind of make it a <coughs> a little bit of my own. So I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil, drizzle it over the bread. Okay. Now we're going to take some black pepper. And we're going to take a little bit of paprika. Just like that. Okay, now, here I have feta cheese, right? Now I had used this, or I had shown you this earlier. I know it kind of looks like butter, it's not. It's feta cheese, all right? So I'm gonna take just a little bit of this feta. And I'm gonna chop it up. Now, this little bit of feta cheese, we're gonna sprinkle over the bread. Okay. Now, now that we've got that bread done, I'm gonna pop this right into the oven and let them toast. Okay. 
All right, we're starting to get some nice sizzle on the onions and peppers here. All right, so I'm going to take the tomato mixture. And you can see we got quite a bit of juice there now, right? This is going to go right in here. And we're going to stir this up, really mix that together. Tell I'm really trying not to make a mess today. I always make it. Oh, I already did. There it goes. So, okay. Now I'm going to let this cook for maybe about 10 minutes. We want to cook some of that juice off and let those tomatoes reduce down a little bit. So uh, I don't want to make you stand here and watch me just watch tomatoes cook. So we'll be back in a couple minutes and we'll finish this off. I promise you're going to like it. Okay, so you can see here the tomatoes have started to really cook down. We've got quite a bit of liquid in here. I've taken those olives that I had before and I've cut them up small, right? Now this is going to add some saltiness to this, which is why I cut down on the amount of salt I put in. I would normally put a tablespoon in, but I cut it back because I knew I was going to get some saltiness from the olives, right? So stir those in. My bread is still in the oven. I've got the bread on 380, 375, you know, you're pretty much just looking to toast it, right? I'm going to take this little piece of feta, cut it up. Feta breaks up pretty easily, so... We're going to mix this right into here. Okay. Now comes the tricky part. All right. We want to take this. And we want to smooth it out. Okay. So you get a nice level surface like that. All right. We're going to take our eggs. I'm going to make a little divot. I'm going to crack an egg into it. Okay, see that? We're going to do that four times. Now, I realize this doesn't have protein besides the egg in it. If you wanted to throw some shrimp in here, you could. If you wanted to throw some kind of other meat in here, you could. I mean, the, the sauce, the broth is, you know, very flavorful. So, you know, if you want to put something else in here, you definitely could. Or if you wanted to leave one of the veggies out. Say you don't like peppers. You know, substitute it with something else. All right, so now the four eggs are in there. We're going to cover this. We're going to reduce the heat a little bit. Okay, let's check our bread. It's starting to toast. We're not quite there yet, though. All right, now, how are we going to plate this? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those pieces of bread we're going to place it right in the middle of the plate. We're going to take the egg after it's cooked, and we're going to take a large scoop of the dish. Once these eggs cook a little more, I'm going to pull this cover off, and we're going to let some of that moisture cook off, right? They're starting to firm up now, so we're almost there. And we're going to put that on top of the bread. If you want jalapenos, like I said, I, normally I'd put them in earlier, but if you want them, you can either drizzle them over the top of the egg, or... If you wanted to serve, say, you know, the, the kids or people that don't like spicy stuff, serve those eggs, mix your jalapenos back into the sauce, let it cook for a few minutes, it'll give you the same effect. We're going to drizzle some feta over the top and cover the whole thing with chives. All right, let's let some of that moisture off. You can see those eggs are really starting to firm up. We don't want them totally solid. I mean... Don't get me wrong. If you don't like eggs runny at all, cook them. Like, cook them right to death. 
let them firm totally up, not gonna hurt anything. You're gonna get a lot more flavor if you leave them a little bit runny so that when you cut into them, get a little bit of yolk that breaks out into that tomato, onion, pepper. Trust me on this one, you'll like it. All right, so while that is doing its thing, I'm gonna finish cutting up this little piece of feta that we're gonna use as a garnish. All right, like I said, the feta breaks up real easy, so when you drizzle it over the top, you can actually break it up with your hands. All right, there we go with that. So we've got our feta, we got our jalapenos, we got our chives. Just gonna rinse my hand off a little bit here. Let's see. Yep, they're getting there, they're almost there. Okay, so let's check our bread. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pull this out. You can see we got a nice, a nice toast on those. We got a little bit of feta melted on the bottom. Um, that'll go underneath the egg mixture. It should make a real nice pairing on the bottom. All right, so. When you do this, you want to use a slotted spoon. You're still going to have some moisture in the pan. All right, so let's see here. What do we got? We got one, two, three. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do two like that. Okay, all right. So let's see how these eggs are. still a little bit runnier than I want it to be. So we're gonna give that a little bit more heat, cover that for just a second. All right, while we're letting that finish off, just a few points here. Um, we will have videos to you a little more frequently. Uh, this was a little bit of a break. Like I said, I was sick and uh, I had to travel a little bit, so we kind of got behind. Please go back and check out the videos we posted recently. There was some really good stuff there. The, uh, the corroboration we did with Toganola came out really well. Um, I'm not just saying that because it was my sister, but it actually did come out really well. And it's a really good recipe. Um, if you have any suggestions for us, please let us know. You can message us. All of our contact and email information is on the webpage. Um, we do check it. You can message us on Facebook. Uh, you can message us on any of the platforms and uh, we will get back to you. If there's something you'd like to see, uh, I'll certainly give it a shot and uh, I might mess it up. It might be more entertaining. So, all right. All right, let's see. Let's plate one of these and see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna shut that off. And when you shut the heat off on a, on a dish like this, <laughs> it's gonna steam a little bit more. So, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to put it right in the middle here. We're going to take some extra around it like that. I'm going to take some feta, and I'm going to take some chives, and there we have well, you know what? Let's do it. I'll eat this one. This is some jalapenos. And there you have my version of a Tunisian shakshuka. I think I'm saying that right. I'm like 85% sure. So I'm going to plate the rest of this up for these guys. We're going to feed this little girl. So hopefully uh, she calms down a little bit. This is a little bit of a different one. I promise she doesn't even talk when we're not filming. Um, this was a little different one. It's a little bit exotic. Give it a shot. Don't be afraid to try stuff like this. This really was easy. I spent more time cutting up tomatoes than I spent doing anything else. So give it a shot. Hope to see you next time. Uh, let us know what you think and uh, we'll talk to you soon.